Hello everyone, hope you are all doing cool, man. Um, I just came back from work and uh, I was worried in my spirit and I said, let me drop this video. Yesterday, I watched a video about Apostle Suleiman. He uh, made some... He said some, some such things. What God told him about the coronavirus, he said a lot of things. Now... Like I said before, in one of my video, I'm now a member of uh, Omega Fire Ministry, and uh, I'm not a fan of Apostle Suleiman, but I love what he does. Now I want to I want to talk about this video. I'm not trying to tell anybody to believe what he said or kick against what he said the reason I'm, I'm i just want to say this is after watching the video there are a lot of comments that came along and a lot of people were criticizing him some people calling him names there's a particular person that said why is it that god review god can tell you all those kind of things and god cannot tell you how to make nigeria a better country that is what that was the comment that caught my attention. Here's the thing. God is God. Like he said in the video, God has given it to man. True. And God does not interfere in the affair of men except God is brought into the equation. Now, we especially Nigerians, now this this is African mentality generally, but especially Nigerians, we are so we are just a bunch of lazy and uh, careless people. Sorry to put it this way. In the sense that we we want everything to be done for us. We want to be sleeping in our room. Why somebody come? Or we just want to wake up one morning and find out that Nigeria is now just like UK. Just like, uh, you know, it's beautiful. There is job everywhere, everywhere. The streets everywhere is okay. So beautiful. That, that is the kind of people we are. We forget the part that everything cannot be done by a miracle. No Western world, there is no Western country who became what they are today just by mere dream. Just sleep, wake up, then realize that the country is not what they are. They, they have to, they work for it. They didn't have the, the real the actual good government at first but the people knew what they want and they came out with one voice of course there will always be an opposition but the majority came out with opposition came out with one voice to demonstrate for what they want not what is being given to them because in in this in this system if you don't take anything by force not to you will get nothing when i mean by, by force i'm not talking about violence I'm just talking about know what you want. Like we Nigerians, of course we saw what is happening. Even I heard a few days ago that Buhari left the country. Now, if people have to vote again now, even though votes doesn't count in Nigeria, a lot of people are still going to vote for Buhari. Knowing very well the man doesn't care about anybody, apart from himself and his family. What Apostle Suleiman said, if you like, you take it. If you like, you don't take it. It will change anything. I know most people also doesn't want to hear about prophecy. Now, in, in a country or in a land where there are, where there is no prophecy, it's people will do things anyhow. Because, things happen anyhow because you can't see it coming. You don't know where it's going. You don't know where it's coming from. It just happens while you try your human efforts to pull those things away and they are still there. For me, I believe so much in prophecy. So, like I said earlier, we Nigerians, we have to work. If we are going to sit down for God to give a prophecy to somebody that this is the man you put in seat to make Nigeria great, this is how much you have to budget for hospital, this is how you're going to do this, how you are going to do that, we'll remain where we are, we'll continue to go back. We have to work out whatever we want nobody is giving anything to anybody the people that are great today nobody made it for them they did it for themselves 
we have to work for it. So let's keep that lazy mindset outside and do the right thing. When we do the right thing, we get the result we desire. That's just what I want to say about this whole thing. And uh, for Apostle Sulema, if you're criticizing him, that is your business. Because Christianity is is a complicated, is, is very complicating. It's a complicated system. Now, there are fake prophecy everywhere. There is also genuine prophecy. Now, no, understand this. Whenever Satan knows that God is going to release a prophecy to his people, what Satan does first is he brought out his own agent to spread false prophecy so that people will lose faith, lose faith in the original one. Of course, there is always a prophecy, but Satan will always try every possibility to make sure people lose faith in the original one. So, if you condemn the real one, condemn the fake one, at the end of the day, you are condemning everything. Just like we are now in Nigeria, we don't believe lie, we don't believe truth. We don't even know what to believe. We are confused people. So, if you have never been in the darkness, you won't understand how light looks like. You call somebody fake. You doesn't have what it takes to be a fake. Neither are you real. You are just nobody. Because you have never done anything. At least even the native doctor can, can do something. Native doctor can make a charm and it will work. But you, you have not been able to do anything. You are criticizing a man who have raised people from the wheelchair. A man who have done a lot of miracles. I don't whether I'm not here to tell you he's using the real power from God or not. But the fact that spirituality is concerned, the man is in it. So let's not criticize people. The Bible says, Touch not my prophet and do no harm to my touch not my anointed one, do no harm to my prophet. A lot of us are going to a lot of people will go to hell on the last day just because they spoke against somebody which they thought it was actually from the devil. Miriam and um, Heron spoke against Moses. Moses wasn't there. What happened to the leprosy came upon them. Moses was not aware of it. Until they have to go to Moses and beg for forgiveness. It still happened today. Let's be careful the way we use our tongues. And I pray that God will help us. Corona came, Corona will also go. Human beings will always remain. But there is always a scapegoat to every incident. Those scapegoats are going to pay with their head. So every day is a new system. Let's pray. If you don't know God, this is the time to seek the face of God. Nothing just happened. Nothing happened for nothing. Man did not create this earth. We only found out that we are living on earth. Ma did not create earth. God created earth. If you say God, nobody created earth, nobody created you, you are just there by yourself. One day the owner of the earth is going to drive the people away. Know this. One day, one day, God is going to come and demand his piece of land. And everyone cultivating on that land without regarding the owner of the land is going to pay dearly. There is going to be, I didn't know. I was told. I didn't hear. I thought they were lying. I thought I knew much. But now I realize that I knew nothing. Let's be careful. This virus has taught the world that your money is useless. Your fame, your influence, they are all useless. The only thing that matters is your soul. And it depends where your soul goes to. A lot of people talk about, preacher said, uh, serve God so that you have eternal life. Every human being has, an eternal, has eternal life. You don't need to beg God for eternal life. There is a spirit in you. And that spirit lives forever. It doesn't die. The only thing is where are you going to spend your eternity? That is the question. Not to get eternal life. We all have eternal life. I pray that God help every one of us. Stay cool.